and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. I'm Priscilla. I'm the owner of A Life Full of Simplicity. So today's video is going to be the upcoming releases. This is going to be the November edition. So all the tarot and oracle and other decks that will be releasing in November. Now, I did decide to include a few books in this particular edition. Um, I found a few books that I thought were interesting, so I thought I'd include them in case other people were interested in picking them up. So let me go ahead and start screen recording my phone. Uh, here we go. So we can get started. There we go. So the first deck, so we're just going to get into it. The first deck is uh, Crystals for Beginners, a deck of 50 crystal cards to heal body, mind, and spirit. This is by Judy Hall. Um, this is published by Krauss Publications. Never heard of them, so no idea. There are no images. It's literally just an image of the box. So I don't know. This person is apparently the best-selling author of the Crystal Bible. So I don't know what the quality will be like or what the cards would look like. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Getting ahead of myself. I found more images down below. Okay, so it seems like it'll be Crystal, name of the Crystal... What does that say? Crystal, the crystal for, and then what it's for. So here it says amethyst, restful sleep. Labradorite is for esoteric knowledge. Green, aventurin is for emotional calm. And then I guess the back will tell you if it's for mind, spirit, or body. And then go into different details about the particular crystal, it seems like. This seems pretty decent. Um, I don't think there's going to be a book, I'm assuming. Seems like we have a bunch of different thing, other things from Judy Hall, like a crystal journal, Bible, Bible 2, Bible. Wow, did a lot of Bibles. <laughs> a lot of crystal Bibles. <laughs> That is funny. Let's see if there's a guidebook or anything. It says 50 pages, though I think that's the 50 cards. I don't think there's, yeah, I don't think there's a guidebook with this one. I think it's just the crystal on one side, the message or whatever on the back. So very simple to use in my opinion. Is this something I would pick up? Probably not, to be honest with you. There's a lot of crystal decks out there. I have I have the one from Mystic Mondays. That's the one I prefer, to be honest with, to be honest with you. The Crystal Grid deck from Mystic Mondays. Um, that one's probably my absolute favorite. And then I have the Daily Crystal Inspiration cards. And that one's pretty good as well. I'm not a fan of the cardstock when it comes to that particular deck. But... I do enjoy the messages and whatnot. And that one does come with a guidebook. So, yes. Uh, not something I'm interested in. But if you're interested in crystals and you love collecting all the crystal decks, definitely one if you want to check out. Maybe you will be interested in this. Moving on, we have the DC Tarot and uh, tarot deck and guidebook. This is by Casey Gilly and 17th and Oak. That's the illustrator, apparently. This is obviously published by Inside Editions. Also releasing November 1st, like the previous deck. It looks like it'll be a 128-page guidebook. Okay, so we have the box here. Love the box. Very nice. We have the Fool, the Empress, Chariot, the Moon, Sun, we have the King of Wands, we have the Ace of Wands, we have the Two of Pentacles, Knight of Swords, Queen of Cups, Five of Cups. Oh, we have some images of the guidebook. 
Perfect. So this does tell you who it is in the major. Major Arcana. It seems like the major has like a blurb about the card and then upright reverse, which is pretty typical. A plastic man. Who is this? Okay, here we go. Four court cards. Perfect. It tells you who it is. Love that. I'm not a big fan when books don't tell you who the character is or who's in the card. Uh, very hard to know if you're not familiar with, you know, these particular fandoms and things like that, which I don't know everyone from DC. I know some people, but I don't know everyone. So it's good to have names of people. So we seem to have some more cards here for the miners. So it will be a pip deck. However, I have to say, this is supposed to be the nine of wands. I do like that they show eight wands um, pointing up and then one wand specifically pointing down. I feel like you could, you can really like get the message from this particular from this particular card, you know, it says here, um, plea for protection, advocacy, support. I get that. I get that feeling from these part, this particular card with the eight wands pointing up. It looks like it's protecting the one that's pointing down. So I definitely get that. I feel like this is definitely well done. 10 of wands. That looks great. Actually, they're all bunched up. It looks like it's being held to go by the lasso of truth which is uh, Wonder Woman. So I do like this. I, th I think the, I personally think that this is, those two particular cards are well done for, for Pip because you can still get the, the meaning from them. Then we have Pentacles. Seems like we have Lex Luthor here. Uh, she's the queen of the Amazons. That's cool. That's cool. Then we have some pips for the swords. Seven. Yeah, definitely get that sneaky kind of vibe. You have one hand trying to steal one sword from all the swords. Yeah, I get the vibe. And then we have the eight of swords. What does it say here? Feeling a prisoner confined. Yeah, it does look like they're confined. One's facing one way, the other one's facing the other way. And then you have a bunch of uh, swords that are like trying to be in in front of those. So they're trying to prevent them from leaving or those swords from being taken or whatever. So definitely get that feeling. I do like this. I think that even though it's Pip, it's not the type of Pip where it's like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten swords, like five and five. And that's what you see on the card, and that's it. So I definitely like that they put a little bit more thought into them, making them pip, but obviously they're not fully illustrated, but you can still get the meaning from them if you know the meaning is already. That's going to be my thing. With, with pip decks, I find... If you already know the meanings for them, you're more likely to be able to catch on to the illustrations, even if they are pip, in my opinion, especially if they're well done. So I like it. I may eventually get this and add it to my collection. There's no other photos other than those, which is pretty good. They have quite a number of photos. So yes. Next. So next we have the Pixar Inspiration Cards. This is by Brooke uh, Vitale or Vital or Vital. Not sure how to pronounce the surname. Apologies. This is also uh, by Insight Editions, I believe. Yeah, Insight Kids. So this is their kids. This is apparently for five to ten year olds, though. Let's face it. There's no such thing as things for kids like. Adults buy things for kids for the cells all the time. So don't let that prevent you from purchasing this if you, you know, if you want it. <laughs> if you want it, get it. That's, that's going to be my thing. 
So and this is the box here. It looks like it's going to be just like a flip top. Seems to come with a few, uh, it seems to come with a little booklet and then some cards. I am positive. I know that no matter what happens, there is always a silver lining. That's why I always look on the bright side of things. This is for five-year-olds. Can five-year-olds read all of that? <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, it says reading age, but... I feel like this is a little too complicated for five-year-olds. But hey, whatever. <laughs> I don't have kids, so I wouldn't know. If you have a five-year-old, let me know in the comments below. Is this too complicated for your child to read? I would be interested in knowing that. Then we have another card here. It says, I am determined. No matter what obstacles stand in my way, I just keep swimming. Cute. It looks like it has different colored cards. And it comes with a little book. Does it have any more information down below? Oh, this does uh, release November 1st. So let's see. So 52 page book. Or maybe not. I don't know. Why can't I read the rest of the description? Oh, there we go. Uh, oh, no, it's print length. is actually 32. They should fix that. But anyway, uh, 52 is the number of cards. So it's 52 affirmations to share, a 32 page booklet with instructions and thoughtful ideas on how to use the cards. Cool. Nice. This is cute. Honestly, it's cute. If you like cute things and are into Pixar, I would say check it out. Um, not for me. I don't care much for it. I have enough affirmation decks. Honestly, I really don't need another one. So, yes, though, I just said that and I really like this one. <laughs> I kind of want this one. So raise your vibration, Oracle. Uh, this is a 48 card deck and guidebook. This is by Kyle Gray and illustrated by Ari Wisner. Ari Wisner is the individual who created the uh, transient light tarot. So, yeah, I kind of want this. It's one of those high vibes, good vibes kind of uh, Oracle deck. Honestly, I'm sure a lot of people don't like these or are tired of these, but I do really like this. I like this better than his uh, angel decks, uh, to be honest with you. So, yes, we can see one here. It says, my high vibes heal the world. It's so cheesy, but I love it. Is there any other photos? This is also set to release November 1st. This is obviously published by Hay House. 168-page guidebook. There's 11 chakras. What? <laughs> so this is apparently based on... High vibe messages based on each of the 11 chakras. I don't know nothing about chakras clearly since I thought there was only seven um <sighs> yeah I don't know but we have some other cards here and I kind of like it I like um Ari Wisner's um artwork their artwork is really nice so I'm interested Facing my shadow removes darkness from the world. Ooh, I like that. So it says, I lovingly accept myself. And then it says, uh, lovingly accepting yourself means truly honoring who you are. It's about moving beyond the self-perceived flows and finding the beauty anyway. Love is who you are. That's cool. Clear your karma. Nice. Yeah, I do like this. Not sure what other people think of this particular deck, but I do like this and am interested in it. I love the fact that the guidebook is 168 pages. Hay House always does a fantastic job with their oracles, to be honest with you. I actually really love their oracles. I think the majority of my oracle, oracle collection is Hay House. <laughs> so, yeah. I do really love their Oracle cards. 
they usually do a fantastic job in my opinion. So yeah, that was uh, Raise Your Vibration Oracle. Next we have a Lenormand. So this is the Lustrous, Lustrous, Lustrous Lenormand. <laughs> it's by Cairo or yeah, Cairo Mar Marchetti and uh, Tony Savori. I don't like the borders, to be honest with you. Not a fan. Not a fan of the borders. Interesting artwork, though. He always has interesting artwork, in my opinion. This is uh, Llewellyn. This is going to be one of their big uh, box sets, uh, like their kits, like they do in their tarot, but this will be a Lenormand version. Um, guidebook is going to be 208 pages. This is set to release on November 8th. Uh, yeah, so we have more pictures here. Interesting, interesting. We don't have that many more pictures. Rider, snake, sun, two of the same photos. Masks, and then labyrinth. Uh, looks like they renamed the some of the cards. Masks, 42. What's 42? I don't even remember. <laughs> I've been learning Lenormand, but I don't remember all of them. Like, what their numbers are. So... Yes. Um, I have two Lenormand decks already. Not really interested in this one, to be honest with you. Then we have the uh, Ether Creatures Oracle Cards. This is by Teal Swan. Now, I've talked about this before, but at the time there was no photos. Um, now there's photos, which finally. <laughs> the cover interests me. But, um, I'm not interested anymore. I don't like these borders. They're way too thick. Way too thick. So, yes. Hmm. I don't know what most of these things are. I know what this is. Gin. It's what we consider a genie, I guess. And then we have Yoroni. Not sure. Uh, Fractal Widget. I don't know what this is, but it has a lot of eyes. It's a little unnerving, to be honest with you. <laughs> then we have Tantu. I don't know what this is either. Kind of looks like a rat octopus kind of thing i don't know because of the face it has like tentacles on its face i'm just like Ooh. little creepy i'm sure this will appeal to a lot of people though uh set to release november 8th this is by watkin watkins rather publishing 136 pages how many cards again is there Oh, 77. Nice. Nice. How much is this, Canadian? Only 30 bucks. Okay. Way to go, Watkins. 30 bucks. And believe me, for 77 cards, that's a steal in Canada. <laughs> I'm sure it's less in the United States, though. And in the UK, most probably. So, yeah, that was Aether, Aether, Aether. Uh, creatures oracle cards then we have the philosopher's tarot this is by Sarepti. Sarepti. not sure how to pronounce the name of this individual this is also supposed to be releasing november 8th it's published by repeater never heard of them don't even know what this is this is supposed to be a deck uh, I think it's a deck or a book. No, it's cards. Okay. It's supposed to be a tarot deck, I guess. Classic tarot deck. I don't know what they look like. There's no photo except for the cover. 
we can see like the devil card and the devil has a different hand <laughs> different person's face on it very strange in my opinion <laughs> Um, yeah, it says a 70 of cards, a 35 page guidebook. Ugh, that's a little too small, in my opinion, for a tarot deck. Like, mm, too small, too small. <laughs> they should have put a little bit more effort into their guidebook, in my opinion. Then we have the Journey of a Lonely Soul Oracle Cards. Now, this was set to was supposed to be released last month, but it got pushed to this month, also November 8th. This is by Anna uh, Majaburda and Charles Harrington. Very interesting. Looks like it's going to be like a darkish deck. Um, no other cards there. This is uh, published by Los Garabeo. Here we go. We have a few other pictures. I can't zoom in. So this is what we see here. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> I wish I could, but I can't. Um, yeah, it looks like it'll be a dark deck. I'm not, I don't know. The chick is creepy. It says that it's, Featuring an unforgettable medley of lush color and gothic surrealism. Interesting. Definitely gothic. I have to say, I do agree with that. Uh, very dark. Probably a good shadow work deck, I guess, if you're looking for one that's a more feminine based. Because um, this does look more feminine based, in my opinion. Um, not something I pick up. Doesn't look like something I'd enjoy, to be honest with you. Does it say how long the guidebook is? No, it doesn't. Does it say how many cards there are? It doesn't even say how many cards there is. I wonder if Llewellyn's website says. Let's see. Oops. Any of, uh, here we go. Oh, we have some images here on the Mullins website. 48. Oh. This seems to be the backs. Twilight Debutante. Ooh, their faces. Wastelands, Absolution, Portrait of a Seeker. Yeah, very creepy. <laughs> I have, I'm good with Shadow Work decks. <laughs> I don't think I need another one, to be honest with you. Looks like there might be 48 cards. It says Case Quantity 48. <sighs> so I'm not sure, uh, to be honest with you. And it doesn't say how thick the guidebook will be though as we know already with Los Garabale the guidebook will be in multi it'll be multilingual so the English will probably only be like I don't even know not that long <laughs> usually usually with their tarot decks it's about maybe 10 pages or something so I don't know if it'll go into that much depth but it seems like there might be a possibility for a good number of cards, maybe. I'm not sure. Um, maybe if I look at another. Let me just look at another. Here it says 45, case quantity 1. Maybe. Possibility. Possibilities. I'm not sure, though. Next, we have the symbolic Soul Tarot. This is by uh, Elisa Setzinger and Barbara Moore. Um, this is also by Los Garabale and was also set to release last month but got pushed to November 8th. Uh, very interesting uh, deck in my opinion.
it is uh, like a duotone. Um, I kind of like it though. It's interesting. Yeah, I kind of like this. I did add it to my wish list, though the price point I don't like. So it's retails for $45 in Canada. I don't understand why, because it comes in there that kind of box, um, like the Tarot of Oppositions, where it, the top comes off. Like, I don't understand why that's $45. <laughs> Like, in my opinion, that should not be $45 Canadian. So the price is not very nice, but the deck looks pretty cool. It, it does look like it's fully illustrated, which I don't think I've ever seen Llewellyn, Los Garibale, or Blue Angel. Well, does Blue Angel even have any tarot decks? Anyway, I don't even know, but I've never seen a tarot deck from them be pip. So fully illustrated. And, yeah, they don't have any other um, cards other than this. I kind of like what I see, though. Definitely interesting in the imagery. Their eyes look very strange. They don't look like they have... Like, it looks like their eyes are a solid color. Which is <laughs> weird. <laughs> like, they don't have actual eyes. But definitely interesting. I'm going to keep an eye out for this one in particular. I would love to see an unboxing of it to see if it's actually worth the, f the price point. Because $45, I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. Then we have a compendium of witches. This is by Natasha Il uh, Ilenik. Ilenik? I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing the surname correctly. Apologies if I mispronounced it. This was indie, picked up mass market. Uh, it's coming out by Los Garibale as well. Also set to release November 8th. It was originally supposed to come out last month, but got pushed. And this one too has a very high price point for Canada, in my opinion. This is like 50, almost $52 Canadian, which I'm just like, I don't understand why, like... Their oracles are usually not this high. So I'm wondering what the quality will be to make it this kind of price point. Because I know in the original, so like in the India version, I believe the guidebook was a hardcover bound book. I believe the quality was nice. So I understand the price point in that regard. But I've never seen, I've never been a fan of Los Garibale, um oracle decks to be honest with you and i'm wondering how this will be so this is one that i'm keeping an eye out i would like to see someone do a review unboxing of this particular oracle deck to see if it's for me it's worth spending almost 52 dollars canadian on <laughs> at least to get free shipping which is decent because <laughs> we all know Shipping always makes the price go way higher in Canada. So, yes. There are a few images. I don't think there's been any changes. Uh, there are 60 cards in this particular deck that I know. 36, I believe, are of witches and wise women and all that stuff. And then the other... Sorry, 30 are... Um, witches and women, wise women, and all that good stuff. And then uh, the other 30 are magical symbols. So, yes, which is how she had it in her uh, original indie version. So they've kept that the same, which is great. I, yeah, I'm going to keep an eye out for this. There's no actual, like, other photos. I don't think, I don't think she's made any changes other than make it borderless. I believe in the indie version it's bordered. So it looks like it will be borderless for uh, the mass market version. So I'm just going to wait to see um, an unboxing to see if it's something I'd be willing to spend that much money on. Then we have the uh, Notoria Tarot of Light. This is by Fabio Lestrani. This is supposed to be the light version of the Goetia Tarot, I believe. Very strange looking deck. <laughs> Very strange. Like, look how weird that is. 
so creepy. Yeah, it's a no for me. <laughs> Not something I'm interested in. Uh, it's also set to release November 8th. It was originally supposed to be released last year. Um, not last year, last month, but got pushed um, a month forward. And yeah, I believe um, Los Garibale originally did a Kickstarter for the... Or maybe it was this person that did a, a Kickstarter for indie versions or like a limited edition version or something of the sort. I don't actually remember what it was. I think it was in partnership with Lil Scarabelle. I think I remember seeing Lil Scarabelle on that. But I don't remember 100%. But yes, it's uh, this is the mass market version. So not the limited edition version. Which I don't think you can get anymore. I know I remember seeing on Lil Scarabelle's website specifically some limited edition options but I believe they sold out. So I believe, I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, not for me. I know a few people that are interested in this deck and are interested in picking it up. So hopefully they enjoy it because I know that they have the Goetia Tarot. So yeah, let me know if this is something you're interested in because I don't, for me, it's, it's a no. I'm not, I wasn't interested in the Goetia Tarot either. So not going to be interested in this as well. Then we have the Barbieri Night Fairies Oracle Cards. This is by Paolo Barbieri and Rachel Paul. I have never been a fan of Paolo's work. So I'm not interested in this either. Uh, he has like a few decks. The cat one. He has a dragon one. He has a few different oracles. I don't know. If they're listed here, Star Dragons. Uh, I know he has a cat one. I'm not interested in that either. I don't remember what else he has, but he has several, several different decks. I think there's a Zodiac one as well or something like that. And yeah, this doesn't interest me. Not really my art style. Very fantasy, though, so if you're interested in fantasy decks, you might actually really enjoy this because it's very fantasy-based. But, yeah, no, this doesn't interest me at all. We have a few more pictures down below. Very interesting. Definitely nice. Don't get me wrong. Very fantasy. Definitely something out of a fantasy novel. But yeah, it doesn't really interest me at all. This is also set to release November 8th. It was originally supposed to be released last month again, but it got pushed this month. So hopefully all these decks don't get pushed again. This is also published by Los Garibale. Then we have the Magical Botanical Oracle Plants from the Witch's Garden. This is by Maxine Miller and Christopher Penzak. <laughs> This is also published by Los Garbao, I believe. And I believe so, anyway. It definitely looks like it'll be a limited color palette. Definitely interesting, I have to say. I am not interested in this. It definitely looks like something that was like drawn in like one of those vintage books. So that is appealing. I do like that sense. But I don't think I'd be interested in using this particular particular deck. I don't think it would uh, appeal to me other than the fact that it looks like a vintage book. But that's really it. And is that really worth the $47 that it costs in Canada? Not really. So yeah, no, this won't be one that I'll be picking up. But if this interests you, definitely check it out. Again, these are Canadian prices. I'll tell you if I'm on amazon.com. But yeah, these are all Canadian prices. So check your Amazon, um, your specific Amazon for your country to see what the price would be. So yes, fun, fun, fun stuff. 
Next, we have the Steampunk Art Nouveau Tarot deck. This is also by Los Garibaldi. It's also set to release November 8th. All of them are coming out November 8th. I have a feeling that's going to get pushed again. <laughs> like, that's a lot of your catalog coming out one day, specifically. They should have spread this out a bit, in my opinion. It's a little too much. Um... So yeah, this is their like tuck box uh, kind of tarot deck, which is their best cardstock, honestly. Their cardstock and their tuck boxes are a lot better than the cardstock that's in their hard boxes. So the ones that have the tops that come off. Yeah, those, mm, very glossy. Very, very glossy. Uh, so yes, November 8th very interesting they have some pictures down here below i there's a lot of steampunk um decks out there i don't know if this one would top the other one that, Lu that llewellyn specifically has their box set that's um i believe the author is barbara moore i don't know if this would top that so yeah, this is in an Art Nouveau style, which is definitely interesting, but I don't know if this is something I'd pick up or something that interests me. The colors are nice though. I do really enjoy the colors. I think I would watch an unboxing or flip through of this first before making a decision for me personally. Then we have the Spiritual Tarot deck. This is again also set to release on November 8th. <laughs> And it's also being published by Los Garibaldi. And this is by Cristina Tarica Di Maggio, uh, Lucia Matitoli, uh, Matoli, Matoli? Uh, Francesca Fravolini. This is one of their hard boxes. So where the top comes off, the, the cardstock is glossy to let you know. Um, let's see. Oh, they don't have any... They don't have any pictures down below. So these are the only pictures they have. Interesting. I don't know. I, I don't know about this. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if this interests me personally. I think, again, I would need to watch an unboxing. A lot of Los Garibaldi decks are... They have interesting concepts. But... I'm always like, hmm, would I like this? Is this something I would bring into my collection, you know? And a lot of the time, the answer is no. <laughs> There's only a few. I think for Los Garibaldi, I only had like a few tarot decks from them that I've actually enjoyed and brought into my collection. But yeah, other than that, yeah, not really. Though there's quite a number of mini decks from them that I really want, but... This one in particular doesn't really interest me. I would still love to watch an unboxing, though, to see what is there and how interesting it would be. Then we have the Tarot Cards for Beginners, Larger Size with Meanings, Sample Spreads, and Instructions. No idea. This is apparently by and published by Rock Ridge Press. Uh, I can't buy it on Amazon Canada, but you can pre-order it on Amazon.com, which is very odd. It's set to release November 8th, and yes, interesting, interesting. This looks like it's a really good beginner deck. Uh, we have the keywords upright and then the keywords reversed, or we have not keywords reverse we have sentences is there sentences in the upright too destruction consequences uh, catastrophe detoxification shows sudden change crumbling of structures or foundations to make way for rebuilding the new okay and then in the reverse it says caught in the crossfire you are affected by someone else's experience uh, of destruction and collapse in their own life Others' mistakes do not have to limit your spirit. Interesting. That's a lot of text. A lot of text on card. We have uh, some cards for spreads, which are interesting. 
This looks fun. Honestly, I like it. Um, I want to know what the cardstock is like, though. Um, because I don't know. We have another sample spread here. Resolving an issue. Interesting. Past, present, future. Cool. It looks nice. Very colorful. Which I don't mind whatsoever. So, yeah, I'm kind of interested. This looks like it will be a good deck for beginners, in my opinion, especially. Or especially if you like keywords on your cards. This does have a lot of keywords, though. But I don't know how much, how many keywords you like on your cards. Um, but this would be fun, in my opinion. Um, yeah, this would be fun. Fun little deck. I don't know how much it costs in Canada. We can see quickly how much it costs in the U.S. If it'll let me edit the... Th edit the... Oh, here we go. Because I know you can pre-order it on .com. Sometimes that happens where a deck won't be available for ca Canadians until they actually release it and then it'll say that it's available. So it's 25 bucks in the US. Pretty good. That's actually not bad. I wonder how much it'll be. Maybe $35. Maybe $30, $35 in Canada. That's usually I would assume the price range. So yeah. Then we have the Sacred Web Tarot. I did talk about this last month, but for some reason it got pushed to November. So now it's set to release, I believe, November 8th. Yep, November 8th. And there are pictures now, which previously there weren't. So let's look at them. I don't know if this is something I'd be interested in. It does say for the fans of the Wild Unknown. I love my Wild Unknown. As you can see behind me here, I literally have a shelf dedicated to Wild Unknown. So I have all my decks. Um, the Tarot, the pocket, the full-size pocket edition, the Archetypes, the Alchemy, the Animal Spirit, full-size, as well as the pocket edition, because I did receive the pocket edition. So, yes, I don't know. Interesting. Artwork is nice. I wouldn't really say that this is related to the Wild Unknown, to be honest, or similar to the Wild Unknown, or... Maybe they didn't even say that. Maybe I'm just making up stuff. But whatever it is, like, this really doesn't... For the fans of The Wild Unknown, The Wild Unknown is creepy. It's very creepy. So this doesn't look creepy. So I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. It does have some interesting color palettes, um, in my opinion. It's like almost 50 bucks Canadian. I don't think I'd spend that much money on this. Uh, the guidebook is 256 pages, though, which is pretty good. Yeah, it says here, For the fans of the Wild Unknown, a beautifully illustrated gender-neutral tarot deck and guidebook from a mother-son duo that reminds us that we're all connected and provides a highly inclusive experience for self-reflection, self-love, and self-compassion. E okay. Though I feel like The Wild Unknown definitely gets into the depth of things, but I find it gets into the depth more on the shadow side. So I don't feel like there's a really a shadow aspect in this particular deck from the images that I'm seeing. Uh, so yeah, it's not something that really interests me to be honest with you, but let me know if you're interested. Maybe I'd love to hear people's opinions and see if they're interested in the, in these particular, it is a limited color palette, which is similar to the wild unknown, but I'm definitely interested to know if other people are interested in this particular deck. So next we have a book. 
And it's the will you give me a reading what you need to read with confidence. Sorry, what you need to read tarot with confidence. And I thought that was interesting. Um, it's by Jenna Matlin. It's published by Llewellyn. It's set to release on November 8th. It's 256 pages. And is there a back? No, there's no back image. Okay, is there a description? Let's see. So it says, learn to conf confidently deliver tarot readings that leave you energized and querents clamoring for more. Tarot professional Jenna Matlin gives you extensive tips and techniques for not only giving helpful and accurate readings to others, but also ensuring that you're not punished for being the bearer of bad news. I do like that. I feel like um, this would be good even if you don't read for others because a lot of the time, I find a lot of the time people will tell me that they have a hard time reading for themselves. And literally a tip that I tell people is to read as if you're reading for someone else because a lot of the time, if you're having a hard time reading for yourself, it's because there's bias interfering or there's something interfering something that you don't want to see that you're inter that's interfering so a lot of the time if you switch and read it in third person and read it as if you're reading the tarot to someone else it can help unlock a lot of different things to look at things differently so I feel like this could be interesting for anyone not only if you read for others or don't read for others just like for anyone period I think you could probably learn uh, or get some good tips in this particular book. So, yeah, I thought it was interesting. I wanted to share it. I definitely added it to my own wish list. Though I have so many books, I probably should stop buying books <laughs> for now. <laughs> then we have another book that I found. It's called uh, Luminary, A Magical Guide to Self-Care by Kate uh, Skelsa. I apologize if I mispronounced the surname. What is here? We have the cover here. And then the back and... Oh, this is the full thing. So the back with the uh, spine and the cover. What does the back say? So it says your road to self-care can be a mystical journey that leaves you feeling more confident, determined, and ready to accomplish all those bucket list items and dreams you have scribbled in your journal. So why not start that journey now? Within Luminary, you will find both mystical and practical tools to help deal with stress, depression, and other challenges. Gorgeously illustrated and highly designed, this guide offers different creative ways of living a heart-centered, mindful, and magical life through concrete tools for self-care adv and advice from a diverse group of practitioner practitioners in areas like tarot, astrology, energy work, and much more. Luminary is a book of practical magic that will empower you to pursue mental wellness with curiosity and confidence. But it's also a book of possibility that pushes the boundaries of what self-help can be. It's interesting. So yes, this is set also to release November 8th. It is published by Simon and Schuster. Uh, is this for a child? It's 368 pages. Yeah, it says Simon & Schuster books for young readers. Okay, <laughs> I don't think this book should be geared to young readers, but that's just me. That's just me. Um, and also with that book, oh, it's for teens. Okay, 12 and up for teens. Yeah, I guess. Now it's a, it says it here, but it didn't say that in the back, did it? Did it say anything about teens? No, it didn't. Okay. Interesting. So it says here that it's for teens. That's interesting. Though, 
I'm interested to see what the actual content is within this particular book because you're gearing something that has mental health things in it for teens. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I would have to read the book to see if it's something that was good. But then again, I feel like parents are really the ones that, you know, would... It would be their ju- based on their own judgment if this is something they wanted to buy for their teens. I'm going to say that as an adult, if you're buying this book for yourself, who is another adult, I think that's fine. Like, if you're an adult and you're buying this book, fine. Now, if you're buying this for your child, that's up to your own discretion, of course. And you would need to check out to see if the content is, you know, up to your own standards in terms of what you want your child to be reading. That's all I'm going to say for for that particular thing. I didn't even know it was for kids when I found it. Or for teens, rather. To me, a teen is a child. But anyway, <laughs> anyone under 18 is a kid, in my in my viewpoint. Um, so yes, I did know that. And I'm going to say for adults, I think this would be a fun, a fun time. I love self-care, you know that. If you've been watching my channel a while, you know that self-care is a big thing. I definitely advocate a lot for self-care. And yeah, I would say this looks good. I added it to my wish list, so maybe eventually I will pick it up. Then we have the Diablo, the Sanctuary Tarot Deck and Guidebook. This is by Barbara Moore, Constantine uh, Vavilov, and Igor... Sudorenko. Apologies if I mispronounce the surnames. Uh, this was originally set to release last month again, but got pushed to November 11th. Uh, this is published by Blizzard Entertainment. They're the ones who own the rights to Diablo, which is, I believe, a game. I don't know. I really don't. There were no pictures before, but now there are photos. So let's check them out. Seems like it'll be a limited color palette. We have the guidebook. Okay, Three of Swords. Justice. The Devil. Interesting. Not my thing. (laughs) We have the Two of Wands here. We have the Ace of Wands. Okay. Seems like we have an upright reverse. We have keywords and then a blurb. So, yes. That's how I like my guidebooks, to be honest. I prefer when there's keywords as well as a blurb. That way, people who just want to work with keywords can do that. Or if you want to work with the blurb, you can do that as well. So, that is great. 96 pages. Obviously, a 78 card deck because it's tarot. Definitely interesting. Not something I'm interested in particularly uh, those of you who are fans of Diablo. Hopefully it's up your alley and it's something that you would want to pick up for yourself. Now this one I'm actually really intrigued by. I found it randomly while I was looking on Amazon. My way of finding decks is literally just browsing through all the tarot decks there are. I literally just search tarot and just browse through everything. So yes, this is interesting. It looks like it's going to be a round, round deck, round deck. Uh, It's called the uh, Cantigy, Cantigy Oracle, I'm assuming is how you pronounce that. I'm not 100% sure. It's an ecological spiritual guide and creative prompt deck. Uh, Art is by Laura Zuspin. And the writing and concept is by Ray Diamond. Now, who's this published by? North Atlantic Books is the publisher. Never heard of them. It is set to release November 15th. Definitely interesting. This is the back of the box. And yeah, it looks here on top There's that they're round, which is interesting. I have to say, I'm actually really interested. I'm really interested in this. So... 256 page guidebook fantastic we have um 52 cards in this particular deck interesting it says for the for the users of inner compass cards and the wild unknown animal spirit deck interesting 
interesting. I don't have the Inner Compass cards, but I do have the Wild Unknown Spirit deck. I actually have the full size and the pocket edition. So that is definitely interesting. Definitely intriguing. So, yes. Each card in this versatile deck can be used as part of a weekly year-round practice, prompts for spiritual practice, inspiration for ecological activism, inspirational icons and creative seeds, a contemplative opportunity to connect with the natural world. Yeah, I'm really interested. I'm hoping that this will be a good deck. I'm ex hoping to watch an unboxing of this when it comes out to see if there's something that I would want to bring into my collection. I, As of right now, I really love the artwork. The watercolor is very interesting. And I'm intrigued, very intrigued by it, I have to say. Then we have the Phantom Wise Tarot. This is by Erin Morgenstern. If you know who this is, she is the author of The Night Circus uh, for one of her books. She does have other books, but that one would be the most well-known. And I believe is the reason she made this particular deck based on my understanding anyway this was originally indie and it has been picked up mass market and i'm pretty sure she stopped selling the indie deck long time ago so it does look really interesting it is a black and white deck and i love it i never finished uh, reading the night circus i did start it i don't remember how far i got in it but i did start it and I do, did like what I read so far in it. Uh, I just haven't had a chance to finish the book. So we do have some cards here. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. I love it. Looks great. We have some pictures of the guidebook. The guidebook reminds me of the um terror of the divine because it's by the same publisher so this is by this is published by clarkson and potter which is the same publisher as that deck we have some spreads so dream child spread celestial navigation spread very nice goes into the major arcana the star card is what got me the star card i really love that star card if you wanted to see larger So, yes. Interesting. So, that's what they have here. I love that they added some photos of the guidebook. Very nice. Set to release November 15th. Definitely interesting. You see, you can even buy them all together. The deck, the night circus, and her other book, Starless Sea. Which sounds good. <laughs> yeah, see, Clarkson Potter. We have some pictures down below again. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Yep, definitely like this. I might pick this up eventually. Not for right now, though, but it is on my wish list. Then we have the Radiant Wilds Tarot. This is Navigate Inner Desert Dreamscape. This is by Nat Gersberger. Uh, this is published by Rockpool Publishing, and I'm excited for this. It looks great, I have to say. Um... Reminds me of like a photo collage. Reminds me a lot of like the the work your light kind of like a uh, Daniel Noel kind of artwork, but more desert like. So I really do like this. I feel like this deck would go great with my Priestess of Light Oracle. <laughs> And I have been looking for uh, a deck to go with that. So I feel like this would match well. Definitely interesting. Interesting. Also reminds me a bit of the Mystic Mondays tarot. So that's also pretty fun. When is this set to release? This is also set to release November 15th. 128 page guidebook. Uh, 78 cards. We have some more photos here. Interesting, interesting. You don't see a lot of desert 
kind of decks, in my opinion. Um, well, not really in the mass market realm. I know there's a few in the indie realm. But this does definitely seem interesting. Especially if you like that kind of collage. Um, yeah, that kind of collage. Because it's a collage deck. So if you like collage style, then you might enjoy this style of, of deck. In my opinion, anyway. So next we hear we have here there are no coincidences a manifestation deck and guidebook this is by Eliza Kelly uh who's this published by it's pu published by Harry N Abrams not sure if I know who this is uh Abrams part seems familiar but the Harry part doesn't um this is set to release November 15th do we have any photos? No, we don't. So we only have a cover. Do we have any photos down below? Yes, we do. So, hmm. This is very plain. <laughs> very plain. Very not really impressive, in my opinion. It's just whatever. Meh. So it seems like we have different categories. So it's a 44. Oh, it's a pocket size deck. Interesting. Um, so it's broken into four categories. Cosmos, Nature, Thresholds, and Chance. So that's what this says. Cosmos, Cosmos, Nature, Nature, uh, Threshold, Threshold, Chance, and Chance. Okay. That's it. Yeah, I don't know. I would like to see an unboxing of this. I don't think this is something I'd pick up for myself. Honestly, it seems a little plain. Now, don't get me wrong. I love minimalist decks. I have quite a number of minimalist decks in my uh, collection. But this is a little too lackluster for me. Um, it just doesn't seem that impressive or that much work was gone into it. Though, again, I would need to see an actual unboxing to see what the cards actually look like but just from these cards here that are shown these look whatever it's just meh, in my opinion then we have the gentle thrills tarot this is by isa or isa beniston uh beniston i believe is how you pronounce that i apologize if i mispronounce the name this is published by hay house I have a feeling that this was originally indie and was picked up Mars Market. That's what I want to say anyway, because I feel like I've seen this before. Uh, but who knows? It could be deja vu. I don't even know. Set to release November 15th. I'm actually really interested in this deck. I have to say I really love the artwork. It's a very, very like drawn pencil crayon kind of style which I actually don't mind very colorful very fun in my opinion and do we have more photos yes we do down below very interesting I have to say it seems very kooky and I like them so this one this one's on my list I would like to get this eventually I really really like the artwork it looks fun I don't know and sometimes I really like this kind of art style. It kind of reminds me of um, the Wandering Star Tarot, which I have in my collection. Very, like, drawn like that, in my opinion, which I like. I like it a lot, actually. Then we have the Wild and Sacred Feminine deck, a 52-card oracle and guidebook. This is by Nikki Dwart, Elizabeth uh, Margolin, and Jenny... Kostecki Shaw. This is published by Shambhalaya Publishing, I guess. Um, set to release November 15th. No cards up above here, just the deck, as you can see, the cover of the deck, which I actually really like. It looks really nice. If we go below, though, we have some more pictures. It seems like they're separated into, um, like, suits. We have wild, elemental, archetypal, and divine. 
which it seems really interesting. I love the artwork. It looks awesome, in my opinion. The guidebook is apparently 200 pages, which very nice. It says here we have ideas for single card draws, unique multi-card spreads, and an open-ended open-ended exploration of each card's light and shadow aspects. Very nice. I definitely love to see more in this particular deck to see if it's something that I'd be interested. Right now, it's literally sitting on my wish list, but I'm not 100% sure as of right now. Now we're going into Amazon.com for this particular deck because this deck is not available for Canada. Um, so this is Earthly Souls and Spirits Moon Oracle by Terry Floss. It was originally supposed to release last month, but it seems to have gotten pushed. Now it's releasing November 15. Obviously, it's published by US Games. And we have photos. So yes, this is the cover. We have some photos of the cards. Love this abundance card. Very cute. Celestial, hope, faith, peace. Purposeful. Look at all the cats. So cute. This looks really cool. It looks like it was painted. Very interesting. And these are the backs. Nice. Love the backs. Really nice. Um... So yes, November 15, it'll be a 132 page guidebook. There's 55 cards. Fantastic. Always love when there's Oracle decks that are more than 40 cards. Uh, that's my preference when it comes to Oracle decks. So I love that this is uh, 55 cards. Definitely interested. Love the artwork. Um, but as of right now, I can't buy it on Amazon Canada. I would need to purchase it from Amazon.com and I'd like to see if maybe eventually I'll be able to get it on Amazon Canada. So for now, it's on my American wish list, but I'm going to hold off for now. Then we go into another book. This is the How to Study Magic, A Guide to History, Lore, and Building Your Own Practice. This is by Sarah Lyons and uh, Tobias Gobel. This is published by Running Press. And this is also set to release November 15th. Obviously, there's the cover here. We have a picture of the inside a little bit. Witchcraft. But yes, full moon scrying. There's some journal prompts and things like that. I actually received my advanced copy. I am an ambassador for Running Press, so I do receive decks and books for review. So I did receive my advanced copy and I did start reading it. So far, I am loving it. Um, my review, I am hoping to have it posted by uh, November 14th. So the day before it releases. But as of right now, it is available a pre-order wherever you buy your books. So Amazon, you can pre-order straight from the publisher if you'd like. But yes, I'm very excited. It's 192 pages. And yeah, it covers quite a number of different things. Just read a few things here. Uh, so drawing on Sarah's own experience practicing and teaching magic for more than a decade, this interactive exploration takes novice witches through basic tools that they can use in their studies from divination and meditation to cleansing and protection before diving into history, lore, and modern incarnations of a wide range of magical practices. With chapters on witchcraft, chaos magic, spellbooks, and grimoires, gods and goddesses, and more, this dynamic guide gives readers an insider perspective on how to craft their own personalized practice. Each chapter also includes interactive activities, journal prompts, and suggestions for further reading, allowing baby witches to chart their own paths and explore their own power. Do love the fact that it covers different things. I actually really like that there's journal prompts. I did flip through it a bit, and I really like that there's journal prompts and activities. So for me, as of right now, I'm liking what I'm seeing, and I like the fact that there's different activities for individuals that are new to witchcraft uh, to do. So yes, if you'd like to pick this up, 
It's available on Amazon. Then we have the Avatar Oracle. This is a 36 gilded cards and 96 page guidebook. It's by Nari Anastasia. Uh, hopefully I pronounced the name correctly. It is published by Rockpool Publishing. We have some photos here. So we have the box. We have some star seed. Don't know what the other two cards. This is perfectionism. The box looks really cool with the yellow. Creative spark. Energy exchange. Self love. The visionary. Very interesting. Set to release November 21st. It says here, Avatar Oracle has been divinely created to guide and support humanity through the immense changes and energy shifts occurring presently on Mother Earth. Interesting. I don't know if this is something that I would be interested in. I've never even watched the actual movie Avatar. <laughs> I don't know if there's anything else that has that particular name on it. But I don't know if this is something that I would be interested in bringing into my own personal collection. I don't think it really fits um, me <laughs> and my practice. But if you're interested in this particular deck, I think... 36 cards, that's pretty good. It looks pretty interesting, in my opinion. And I'm sure there's people out there that would be really interested in this kind of deck. Then we have the Tarot of Sorceress, a Witch's Wheel of the Year. This is by oh, uh, Berengar, Berengar de Monsi. I apologize if I mispronounce the first name. Uh, apologies very much so. Um, this is also published by Rockpool. For some reason, I'm not allowed to pre-order it. I do know that it's available for pre-order on Amazon.com. But for some reason on Amazon Canada, you can't pre-order it yet. Uh, it's set to release, actually, when is it set to release? In the end of November, I think. November 22nd. It's 128 pages. It might be that kind of thing where you can't pre-order it and it'll just be available once it releases. Who knows? I'm going to keep an eye on it. I actually am very interested in this particular deck, I have to say. It's a limited color palette, which I don't mind. I don't always mind. As long as, as, long as I really like the deck, I don't mind if it has like a duotone or it's limited in its colors. Like it doesn't bother me. But this seems really interesting. And I did watch... Um, a flip through, um, uh, early flip through of it from Lumeria Star, and I really liked what I saw. The cards are bigger than standard tarot, like they're taller than st standard tarot, which I don't mind. I thought it was interesting, but they're skinny, which is fun. So we have some nice cards here. Hangman. Yeah, I I like this. I would love to bring this into my collection eventually because it looks really cool. Yeah, so maybe, maybe I will. Um, I've already watched an unboxing of it, so I'm pretty set in my opinion, I think. This is on my wish list. I'm hoping eventually... Probably not this year because uh, my birthday is coming up and I already have my list set for what I want to get for my birthday. So I think eventually, maybe in the new year, I'm going to try to pick this up. Of course, it's if it's available. <laughs> then we have the Essential Oils and Gemstone Guardians cards. This is by Margaret Ann Lembo. Who's this published by? It's published by Findhorn Press. 42 cards, 160 page guidebook. Very interesting. So this is the front of the box. We have the back of the box, I'm guessing. Or maybe not, I don't know. Okay, for some reason this card won't show up. Um, it seems like they're separated into different colored borders. 
This says intuition and communication. This says happiness and self-confidence, health and well-being, money, creativity, and uh, motivation. Okay, what's the pink? Oh, here's the pink one. Love, friendship, and romance. Interesting. So it literally gives you crystal. There's a spice, I guess, or some kind of herb or is it always spice? herb I guess I don't know I don't know what this is to be honest with you does it say tell me Amazon what is it that's on the cards uh gemstones essential oils hmm. yeah, I guess it's like an herb or fruit or an herb a fruit or I don't know, something like that, a spice, something that you would use in, in, uh, essential oils, I guess, because that's the premise of this particular deck. And then it seems to have like a affirmation, which is cool. It tells you also what goes together and these two go together. Oh, I guess this is the type of essential oil. So the essential oil is the anise seed. That's the essential oil that it needs to be with that particular crystal. Interesting, interesting. Then we have the guidebook. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. It's set to release November 22nd. I don't know if I am. No, this doesn't really interest me, to be honest. I don't really work with essential oils, so I don't think I would need this particular deck in my collection, to be honest. I would have to say that if you're someone who works with essential oils, you might like this, to be honest. I would say check it out and see what it is that you you get so next we have the unusual animal messages oracle deck this is a 52 cards and a 64 page guidebook uh this is published by kiko books and it is by manda commissary this one is definitely interesting because it has animals in here you wouldn't typically see in an animal deck which i kind of like the concept of that can't even see this photo that well let's see here a platypus do you ever see a pl please in the comments name me an oracle deck where you've seen a platypus in it <laughs> like an animal oracle that you've seen a platypus because i have no idea i'm pretty sure i've never seen that then we have a red-lipped batfish. I have never seen such a thing in my life. Capy, uh, capybara. I think I've seen that in a deck before. I don't know if it's one that I have specifically. Then we have a firefly squid. A snail. Pretty sure I have a deck with a snail in it. A warthog. I don't think I have a deck with a warthog in it. Which is definitely interesting. It gives you the table of contents for the book. We have a narwhal here and a gobi jaboa. Jerboa. Not sure. Definitely interesting. So cute looking though. And then we have the box. I'm intrigued by this particular deck. I have an interesting relationship with Kiko books. I have their Oceanic Tarot by Jane Wallace. And then I have Jane Wallace's other deck, which is the Moon and Stars Tarot, I believe it's called. And I really like her Moon and Stars Tarot because they changed the box and the cardstock is matte and all that. But this looks like it's going to be that old box style that's with their oceanic tarot and I'm not a fan of that box at all where it like comes apart this way 
And yeah, I don't, I'm not a fan of that. I wish they would have done like an actual magnetic box like they did with their moon and stars. But then again, who knows? I guess I could wait until um, an unboxing to see. But it looks like just from this particular photo, it looks like it's going to be their box that opens on the side, which I'm not really a fan of. So, yeah, I would want to see... Yeah, I would want to see an unboxing, I think, of this particular deck and see how the card stock is um, and see if it's something I'd like. I do love animal decks. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I love animal decks so much. And I feel like this would be a good one to add to my collection because it's not... Like, it's, it's unusual, right? There's, like, animals in here that you wouldn't really typically see in a deck which I love um so yeah I guess we'll have to see it's um set to release on November 22nd 52 cards 64 page guidebook I see a polar bear here and polar bears are usually in animal decks so that I don't know but we have some birds and fish is that a skunk I don't know Looks like one. Who knows? Oh, we have a mayfly. <laughs> a blue ringed octopus. Octopus I've seen in a deck, but not this one being so specific. A mud skipper. I don't know what this is, but I don't think we've seen that. A sea cucumber. <laughs> That's definitely an interesting animal to put in a deck. I love narwhals. I wish whales and things like that, and like narwhals and whales and those kind of animals were put in decks more often because I definitely like those. So yes, I'm interested. It's staying on my wish list. I don't plan to get rid of this anytime soon. Then we have another book. This is a workbook and I thought that was interesting. This is by Macy Bristol. It's called Tarot for You, a workbook for using the cards to reflect, discover, and grow. It is published by rock ridge press and let's see we have some photos so this is the cover we have the back we have a table of contents so it seems like there's 10 chapters um part and it's separated into two parts so one part is an introduction to tarot for personal growth we have revisiting the basics and then pra practicing tarot for personal growth and then we have tarot exercising for personal growth. So we have self-knowledge, self-love, where you are and where you want to go, mental and emotional well-being, social life and community, love and romance, work and prosperity, overcoming hardships, manifesting joy and resilience. Love the table of contents already, I have to say. We have an introduction. Ooh, this has... um. This has the artwork from that um, from that deck with the keywords that I showed. The Tarot for Beginners. Interesting. Oh yeah, it's published by the same people. That's cool. I definitely like this. We have some key takeaways. Color me pretty. <laughs> okay. Confidence boost tarot spread. Oh, and that's it. That's the last photo. Interesting, interesting. Loving it. Loving it. Set to release November 22nd. I am definitely interested in this particular book. I did add it to my wish list. Definitely interesting. I love me a good workbook. You know, it helps learn tarot great, uh, better, uh, easier, I guess, uh, rather. If you're a beginner, I'm not a beginner. I've been doing tarot for almost five years now. I would say that I obviously haven't learned everything. Uh, that's why I love workbooks and things. Even if you're not a specific beginner, like you know the the you know how to read the cards, you know the interpretations already. I would say that it's always fun to have books like this, no matter where you are in your in your journey. Um, because they're great 
to like learn new things. And I do love using tarot for personal growth. So I definitely added this to my particular wish list. Then we have the Crystal Magic Tarot, Understand and Control Your Fate with Tarot. This is by Carrie Ward. This is published by O Editions. I do have a deck by them. Cardstock is not good. <laughs> so I'm wondering how this is going to be. Um, I also have um, the, whatchamacallit, the Good Karma Tarot. Uh, also, I think that's also by them, to be honest. I know it's by her. Um, she's the author for that deck as well. Let me just quickly check. I want to see if it's by the same people. I have also, I think, another deck by the, the these publisher. Uh, Orange Hippo. Yeah, that's O edition. No. Isn't that the same publisher? Do we have the backs of this? No, I wanted to see the back of the box because <sighs> I'm pretty sure Orange Hippo is O Editions, but anyway, I don't know. Uh, the cardstock is not bad on that. It is glossy. I hate the tray that separates the, that's really annoying, but I would assume that this probably has the same thing, to be honest with you. Um, I don't know about the artwork for this particular deck. I love her writing style. Uh, so the guidebook is usually pretty decent in my opinion. But I'm not sure on the artwork. I do like this hangman though. It has like a crystal associated with each of them. Does it also do that for the uh, minor arcana? It looks like it does. Yeah, it looks like it does. Well, at least for the quartz. Interesting. Guidebook is always great. I don't... There's no other photos other than those. I'm not sure. I would want to see, I think, a flip through of it to see the cards. Because I'm, I'm on the fence about this particular deck. Yeah, I'm on the fence about the artwork. I'm not sure about it. I think I would want to see a flip through to see how it looks. Because based on my experience in the past, you see things on Amazon and then you see someone flipping through it and you're like, wait a minute, that doesn't even look like it's, it looks so much better in person. So I want to see someone uh, flip through it and see if it looks good. Okay, then we have another book. Uh, I think this is the last book, and then the last two are decks. I This is interesting. Okay, I'm not Mexican. But those of you who are Mexican or are interested in reading this particular book, just seeing more understanding of people who are Mexican or Mexican witches, there's this book called The Mexican Witch Lifestyle, Bruhari spells i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing that correctly i'm probably not i apologize uh tarot and crystal magic this is by valerie uh, rulas and it is published by uh, simon and Sh uh, schuster publishing it has some photos love the cover the cover is sick i have to say i love it the art style gorgeous this is the back interesting we have an introduction to tarot which is pretty cool i don't know what this is artwork i guess we have some candle and crystal spells for common problems words of santa Marte. nice very interesting i have to say interesting interesting i would probably want to flip through this at like the bookstore or something to look at it it's set to release november 29th looks very interesting uh... okay yeah, I'm just reading through the information, which you can read on the screen. 
I, yeah, I wanna, I wouldn't mind, um, flipping through this to see what kind of information they have. It seems really interesting. I definitely really love the cover. The cover is really nice. Again, I'm not Mexican, though, um, part of my ancestry is from Brazil. Um, Brazil, Spain, and Portugal. So, I don't know, but it would be interesting to read this, in my opinion, just to get some understanding a little bit. I like to, uh, you know, open my horizons, as they say, learn different things about different cultures. Not something I'd practice, obviously, but I would love to read about other cultures and their practices and things like that just to be educated you know so this is looks like a very interesting book and I wanted to mention it in case anyone was of specifically Mexican descent or is Mexican themselves and wanted to pick this up for themselves in their own personal practice uh there you go if not well if you're interested in just reading it to understand more uh Mexican witch life then Here's a book to do that. I think this will probably do that well. Then we have... So the last two are from Amazon.com. Again, they're from US Games. So I don't... I, I can't find them on Amazon Canada, unfortunately. Because uh, US Games. US only. Um, so yes. We have the Zodiac Tarot Deck and Book Set. This is by Cecilia Latari and Anna Chavez. I did talk about this last month. It was supposed to release last month and it got pushed to November 30th, I believe. Yeah, November 30th. We do have some photos here. If there was no photos last time, I can't remember, but we have the cover, The Fool. I do like this. It looks great, in my opinion. I did add it to my American wish list. King of Swords. Page of Cups, Queen of Wands, love this Queen of Wands, love that black cat, so cute, Pentacles, oh, ten, ten of Pentacles, Queen of Pentacles, the backs, oh, we have the guidebook here, definitely interesting, the artwork is nice, I definitely love the artwork, I don't know if there's any other photos, no, no photos of the guidebook or anything like that, um, it's a 128 page guidebook. The guidebook is apparently going to be in full color, which is definitely decent. I wanted to see if they have, so they have them on the, so we seem to have the elements on the court cards. Oh, we have, okay, so we have the, the, planetary and astrological symbol symbols on the minor arcana so this one is saturn saturn if i remember correctly saturn jupiter jupiter is the four yeah saturn in libra here so i do like that and then we have the elements on the quartz this one is um mercury in virgo yeah, that's Virgo. Venus and Cancer and the backs. Yeah, so they do have the symbols, symbology on the, uh, on the minor arcana, which is really good. If you want to learn astrology, I think this would be a great one in my personal opinion. I think it'll be a good one because the symbols are right on the cards. So it makes it easier to learn if you know the symbology for the planets and the uh, zodiac signs so yeah this is definitely one I want to add to my collection eventually but again because it's not available right now in Canada I would want to wait a bit to see if it's something that would be that would come to Amazon Canada if not then I would have to purchase it from amazon.com which I absolutely hate doing but if I have to I'll do it last deck uh, this has no photos on Amazon. I did show photos last time from U.S. Games. So if you want to check out photos, you can definitely uh, check out U.S. Games. It does show the cover here. Uh, the Pastoral Tarot by Lynn uh, Ar uh, Arajo. 
Um, apologies if I mispronounce the surname. And Lisa Hunt is the artist. Uh, this is going to be a landscape deck. It's set to release November 30th. Again, that's what they say here, but you can't even pre-order the cards on Amazon.com. So who knows? They might push this again. I don't know. Uh, so yes, this is set to release November 30th. U.S. Games again. Here we'll go U.S. Games and look at photos again. This is a landscape deck. Ooh, what's this? Love you who you are. Ooh. They have some interesting pre-orders. Ooh. I think I'm going to need to go through their pre-orders again. <laughs> Sneak peek. <laughs> so yes, here are some photos. We have the Fool, the Sun, Two of Pentacles. This is a landscape deck. I need this. This I need. Absolutely. I don't care. If I have to get it from Amazon.com, I will. Um, absolutely beautiful. I love her art style. Look at these goats. They're so cute. Um, so yes, I need, I need this deck. The backs, oh, gorgeous. And then we have the book. So yes, November, it says mid, it says available mid-November, but on Amazon it says November 30th. So who knows? Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> But yes, I am so excited for this particular deck. I think, obviously, Elise Hunt does always a fantastic job, but I think it's going to be great. Lynn did the uh, book, and I don't know what the book looks like. I don't know if I'm familiar with uh, Lynn's writing style, but it's a 180-page guidebook, so I'm sure that it'll be really good <laughs> with that much depth with that many pages I'm sure it'll be there will be a lot of depth uh to it so I'm really excited for this particular particular deck this one needs to come to my collection 100 percent 100 percent so yeah that was it that was the last that was the that was the last deck <laughs> for November I am super excited with a, there's a lot of great options a lot of options I'm not interested in but there's definitely a lot of great options for people who are interested in what's out there currently. So yes, let me know in the comments below if there was anything that caught your eye. I'd love to hear what you're interested in, what you're not interested in. Definitely let me know. If there's decks that obviously I didn't talk about because we only do mass market here. But if you're any excited for any indie decks that are coming out in November, let me know. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. I do thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Turn on that bell so you can be notified every time I post a brand new video. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as it's greatly appreciated. Thanks so much and I hope that you have a great day.